Hey guys, YouTuber100 here, and here I am with another retro wrestling review. Yeah, I know it's been like, I've made only one of these in the past, and yeah, that was like over a year ago. Yeah, I remember I reviewed the Invasion pay-per-view from 2001, yeah, that was like in July of 2014, so yeah, it's been like 13 months since I made a retro review, but yeah, I'm finally here to make another retro review. And, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry, the camera just looked a little blurry, but, okay, yeah, I'm sure you can probably, like, see me better now, alright. Okay, so, yeah, so, as you can see by the title, I'm reviewing Judgment Day 2003. <sighs> what a horrible show this was. I mean, honestly, I mean, this show was freaking awful. I mean, yeah, it's not like Judgment Day was really, like, ever, like, historically that great of a show. But, I mean, this one, this show was, like, a whole new level of bad for Judgment Day, alright? I mean, yeah. yeah. 2003 was, like, really a down year for WWE pay-per-view-wise. And I think this one was probably the worst. I mean, oh my gosh. I mean, just like, a whole bunch of these matches are so ridiculously short. Alright? I mean, there's only like, three matches on the show that are over ten minutes, alright? And there's like, nine matches on the show. And like, yeah, so, in other words, six are under ten minutes. I mean, yeah, it's just like, so, so bad. So bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you have a couple of good matches on the show, but yeah, I mean, everything else is just, oh man, it's horrible. Yeah. So, um, yeah, let me just get right into the show. Yeah. The show kicked off with a little promo from Stone Cold in the ring. He was just, yeah, this was his first pay-per-view as the co-general manager of Raw. Yeah, he was just welcoming everybody to Judgment Day. And yeah, he was just saying that he was going to watch the show from a skybox in the crowd. And yeah, so yeah, Stone Cold spent the entire show in that skybox with the crowd, yeah. And yeah, then, yeah, Eric Bischoff eventually, he <laughs> went up to the skybox too, and yeah, him and Stone Cold were just like watching the show from up there. There, and yeah, <laughs> then throughout the night they were showing like segments of them in the skybox, like Stone Cold giving Eric Bischoff some food and making him drink beer, and yeah, and yeah, as the show went on, Eric Bischoff got more drunk, and yeah, it, yeah, well, the first couple of parts it was just kind of like, seemed like just kind of like, like unnecessary, but yeah, then, yeah, <laughs> yeah, later on it did get kind of funny when Bischoff was getting drunk, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were just, like, having, like, segments of showing them in the skybox throughout the night. Yeah. And the first match of the night was a six-man tag. It was John Cena and Chuck Palumbo and Johnny Stamboli from the FBI, accompanied by Nunzio, versus Chris Benoit, Rhino, and Spanky, a.k.a. Brian Kendrick. Oh my gosh, this was terrible. And yeah, this match, this only lasted four freaking minutes. Alright? And yeah, and the, it just started off so boring. I mean, it was just, like, Spanky getting beaten down by Chuck Colombo, basically. Yeah, but at one point, Nunzio was distracting the referee, and Johnny Stamboli attacked Spanky, too. And yeah, it was just like, yeah, Chuck Palumbo was basically beating down Spanky for the first half of this match, yeah. And yeah, Rhino and Johnny Samboli were never actually legal in this match at all. And yeah, even John Cena was just legal for like, a little bit at the beginning. And, and yeah, and Chris Benoit was just in legal in this match for a little bit. Well, yeah, yeah, this was so bad. I mean, yeah, like I said, first half was just, start off so boring with just Spanky getting beaten down. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then yeah, they eventually, you know, Spanky then did tag and Chris Benoit, and yeah. Then it, yeah, it was getting interesting, and with like everybody attacking each other. Other, yeah, had like Chris Benoit attacking John Cena, and yeah. One point Nunzio got into the ring and Ryan O'Gord Spanky. Yeah. And yeah, Chuck Palumbo then was attacking Chris Benoit some more, and then Spanky got tagged in again. And yeah, and then Spanky tried to go for his finishing move on Chuck Palumbo, but Nunzio stopped Spanky from doing it, and then yeah. Chuck Palumbo and Johnny Stambouli double teamed Spanky, and then yeah, Chuck Palumbo pinned Spanky, and FBI and John Cena won. And yeah, such a bad opener, and only four minutes, I mean, if it lasted like, if it would have lasted longer, and yeah, it would have had like all guys, like, legal in this match, actually getting like enough time in. And then I probably, this probably would have been good, but yeah, this was just so bad, I mean, a four minute opener, I mean, oh my gosh. And yeah, I only, I give this like, I don't know, a star and a half. And then next up was La Resistance versus Test and Scott Steiner. <sighs> yeah, this was pretty bad too. I mean, yeah, I mean, what do you expect with Scott Steiner? I mean, yeah, stuff with Scott Steiner, I mean, yeah, Scott Steiner was just so bad in this match, yeah. Lower well, Stance were, like, Lower well, Stance was, and eh, they were decent in this match, yeah. And, yeah, was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, tested, stuff with Test uh, made the match better, yeah. The match got better when Test was legal, yeah. Yeah, yeah this was pretty short, too. This was only, like, six minutes. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Scott Steiner was doing his stuff, making... Making Lower Resistance, like, kind of look bad. Yeah, he... Scott Steiner was doing terrible. And, yeah, when Tusk got in the ring, it got m more interesting. Yeah, the match got better. Yeah. And then at one point, it looked like Tess Whip had the match won when he covered either... I think it was, like... Yeah, I forgot if it was Rene Dupree or Sylvain Garnier, but yeah. But yeah, Scott, the referee was distracted with Scott Steiner, and then yeah, Tess was kind of like kind of angry about it, and then yeah, and yeah, Stacy Keebler got up on the ring apron, been trying to like get the referee to turn around and focus on the match, and then yeah, then, and then, like I think it was like, yeah, I forgot it was Sylvain Garnier or Rene Dupree, yeah, yeah, they. Nail test and test accidentally hit Stacy and knocked her off the ring apron and then Scott Steiner caught her and he just set her down and then yeah Test saw that and he wasn't happy about it yeah yeah and then yeah La Resistance went for a roll up on Test but Test kicked out yeah and then at one point Test accidentally hit Scott Steiner with the big boot Ooh. and yeah. Well, Harvard's Stance took out Test and then gave Scott Steiner like a double choke slam. And then La Resistance won, yeah. And then yeah, afterwards Test was angry and yeah, Stacy went to check on Scott Steiner and then Test pulled her out. Yeah, this was what yeah, this was kind of leading up to what went on during the summer with like Stacy then managing Scott Steiner and then yeah, Test eventually getting her back and yeah, all that stuff. But yeah, match was uh yeah, it wasn't very good. I give it about uh, two stars. And then we got the ladder match for the WWE Tag Team Championship. It was Team Ang it was originally supposed to be Team Angle defending against Los Guerreros, Betty and Chavo. But yeah, a couple of weeks before this, Chavo got injured with a torn bicep. Yep, and so you have Team Angle on Sunday night. He was saying that Eddie Guerrero could either face them in a handicap match or for just forfeit the match altogether. But then, yeah, right before the match, uh, Chetty Guerrero was being interviewed, and then, yeah, he said that he had a third option to find another tag team partner. And it turned out that his new tag team partner was Tajiri. So the match ended up being Team Angle versus Eddie Guerrero and Tajiri. And yeah, this was a really good match right here. I'd say this was probably match of the night. Yeah, this was a really good match right here, yeah. Like, at the very beginning of the match, Shelton Benjamin <laughs> Irish whipped Eddie into the ladder that was in the aisle way. Hey, yeah. And yeah, there was a lot of usage of the ladder here, a lot of stuff with, like, like Eddie Guerrero being you know, Irish whipped into the ladders a couple of times. 
And yes, at one point, like, Team Angle had to jury on a ladder, and yeah, Shelton Benjamin dove off another ladder and just splashed, like, <laughs> Tajiri right in between his legs. Yeah. And Tajiri used the ladder to take out Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas. Yeah. And at one point, <coughs> when, when, like, Tajiri had Charlie Haas in the tarantula, and then Shelton Benjamin nailed Tajiri with the ladder, breaking it. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. At one point, like after Eddie Guerrero got Irish whipped into a ladder, Jerry like hit one side of the ladder and, and the other side nailed Shelton Benjamin with it. Uh, yeah. Then he, yeah, there was a spot where Eddie Guerrero was climbing the ladder trying to get the tag team titles. Titles. And yeah, like, Team Angle was trying to stop Eddie from doing it, and then, yeah, Shelton Benjamin was holding on to Eddie's leg, and then he kicked him off, and then Eddie Guerrero gave Charlie Hoffs a springboard powerbomb, um, you know, from the ladder, yeah. And then Eddie Guerrero tried to go for the titles again, and Shelton Benjamin was trying to pull, to stop Eddie from doing it, yeah. And then, yeah, to Jerry... Went, well, I climbed up the other side of the ladder, and then he spit the green mist into Shelton Benjamin's eye, eyes, knocking him down. Now, yeah, and then, yeah, then Eddie Guerrero went to Jerry. He got the tag team titles, and Eddie Guerrero went to Jerry, became the new tag team champions. Well, yeah, it was, a, it was a really good match right there. Yeah, I'd say this was probably the match of the night. I'd give it three and three quarter. And then next up, we got the Battle Royal for the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, this was when they brought the Intercontinental Championship back since it being gone since No Mercy 2002, yeah. And yeah, in this match, you had the return of Val Venus. Yeah, this was a couple of weeks after Eric Bischoff fired him as Chief Morley, and then Stone Cold then hired him back as Val Venus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, yeah, and I really didn't like how they only had it be people who were former Intercontinental Champions that would be allowed to compete in this Battle Royal, with the exception of Booker T. Yeah, but yeah, I felt that they should have just had, it. like, basically everyone on the r Raw roster that didn't have a match at the show. I felt it should have been like that, not just with former Intercontinental Champions, because, yeah, I mean... There were only nine guys in this battle royal, alright? It was Val Venus, Chris Jericho, Goldust, Landstorm, RVD, Christian, Test, Kane, and Booker T. I mean, that said, I mean, I felt like there wasn't enough people in this battle royal. Well, yeah, I felt that maybe they could have also possibly had some guys from SmackDown who were Intercontinental Champions. Then Intercontinental Champions before in this battle royal also, I mean, yeah. Because there were some guys that were on SmackDown that were former Intercontinental Champions too. I felt that they probably could have had it be like a, in a promotional battle royal with Raw and SmackDown guys instead of just Raw guys. Mm, yeah. And, uh, yeah, this was a, this was an alright battle royal, yeah. Early on, everybody was trying to gang up on Kane and eliminate him. And Kane was able to fight them off at first, and yeah, he elimin Kane eliminated Lance Storm from the match. But then, yeah, all, everybody then was able to eliminate Kane. And yeah, and yeah, Kane then came back to the ring and he just attacked everybody. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, that allowed some other people to get eliminated. Yeah, Tess got eliminated, then Val Venus got eliminated, and then RVD got eliminated. Yeah, and then it was down to the final four with Chris Jericho, Christian, Booker T, and Goldust. Yeah, and yeah, they were acting like a two-on-two -two with Christian and Jericho against Booker T and Goldust. Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, at one point, Booker T and Goldust got the upper hand on Christian and Jericho, yeah. And while Booker T was doing Spinner Rooney, Goldust tried to eliminate Booker T, but Booker T ended up eliminating Goldust. So, yeah. And then it was, a, like, a two-on-one situation when Christian and Jericho were double-teaming Booker T. Yeah. And then at one point, Jericho tried to go for the Lion Salt, but then... 
Christian then eliminate Jericho as he was attempting the lion salt by just pushing him over the top rope, yeah. Then it was down to Christian and Booker T. Yeah, they were going at it, yeah. One, at one point, Christian tried drop kicking Booker T. Booker T moved out of the way and Christian accidentally hit the referee and the referee got knocked out. Yeah, and then, yeah, Booker T then threw Christian over. Christian held on staying on the apron, but then Booker T kicked Christian off down the floor. Yeah, and it appeared that Booker T won, and yeah. But then, yeah, Christian then came back into the ring and nailed Booker T with the Intercontinental Championship. And then, yeah, then the referee got back up, and then Christian threw Booker T over the top rope, and the referee called for the bell, and Christian won the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, it was a decent battle royal. I give it about, I don't know, two and a quarter. And then we had the bikini challenge with Tori Wilson versus Sable. Yeah, and, yeah, Lillian Garcia was singing Tori Wilson to the ring, because, yeah, Lillian Garcia was actually the singer of Tori Wilson's entrance music, and, yeah, Lillian Garcia was singing it live for Tori Wilson's entrance here, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, who's gonna complain about this? Yeah, I mean, just two sexy women in their bikinis, I mean, who's gonna complain? Yeah, I mean, but I would have loved it if JR and King were on commentary for this, because, yeah, it was showing, like, King's face. Hey, so how he was reacting to this a few times, yeah. I would have loved to hear what he was saying, yeah. And yeah, it appeared that Sable had it won, yeah. First, Sable was, Sable was wearing, like, some really thin bikini attire, and then, yeah, Tori Wilson was wearing, like, some Playboy Bunny bikini attire, and yeah, but she wasn't exposed as much as Sable was. And so, yeah, and then when Taz was asking, the fans who they felt should win. Yeah, it appeared that it seemed like it was close, but I think the crowd was a little bit louder for Sable. Then Tori Wilson said that she wasn't quite finished yet, and yeah, she exposed herself even more wearing even smaller bikini wear. And so, yeah, then yeah, Taz declared Tori Wilson the winner, yeah. And then afterwards, Sable just, she, well, Tori Wilson, rather, she kissed Sable. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, like I said, who's gonna complain here? So, yeah, I'm not gonna rate this thing, but, yeah, I really have no complaints about here. Yeah, I consider this, considering how bad the show really is, I consider this a positive of the show. So, yeah. And then next up, we had Mr. America versus Roddy Piper. And yeah, this was the official debut of Zack Allen in the WWE. On the SmackDown before this, yeah, he sort of like, he unofficially debuted when he was sitting in the front row when Mr. America handed him the flag and he helped Mr. America in a situation. And yeah, and Roddy Piper pulled his prosthetic leg off. And so yeah, this was Zack Allen's official WWE debut. And oh man, this was bad. Yeah, this was basically just like, just a bunch of punches, kicks, belt whips. Yeah, this was basically just really standard stuff, and yeah, it was really not good at all. You know, there's a little storyline behind this where, like, uh, yeah, Roddy Piper was just ordered by Vince to unmask Mr. America to prove that it's Hulk Hogan. Yeah, I remember, like, yeah, Mr. Yeah, Vince was just obsessed with. I'm asking Mr. Record to prove that he's Hulk Hogan, but, uh, nah. Nah, Mr. America, he wasn't Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, this was just like a bunch of punches and belt whips, and yeah. Sean O'Hara was trying to get involved a couple of times in the match, and yeah, Mr. America fought him off. And yeah, Roddy Piper got the, had his sleeper on Mr. America, Mr. America fought out of it. And then, yeah, eventually Vince came out to ringside, and, yeah, he slipped Sean O'Hare a steel pipe, and, yeah, Vince was trying to distract the referee, and then, yeah, Sean O'Hare tried to hit Mr. America with the steel pipe, but Mr. America ducked, and Sean O'Hare accidentally hit Roddy Piper, 
that Mr. America gave Roddy Popper the leg drop. And then, yeah, Vince tried to get into the ring to break, stop him from pinning Roddy Piper. But, yeah, Zach Allen was holding on to Vince, making, to prevent him from getting in the ring. Yeah, Mr. America got the pin, and Mr. America beat Roddy Piper. But, yeah, this was just a bad match. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, this was only like five minutes, and yeah, just bad. Now, this was just basically to advance the Mr. America storyline with Vince, and yeah. It was just a bad match. I will give it like I don't know, a quarter of a star. And then next up had the World Heavyweight Championship match. Triple H defending against Kevin Nash. This was ridiculous. I mean, oh, the freaking booking with Triple H as the World Heavyweight Champion in 2003 with his matches. They gave Triple H just. Triple H had like four crappy matches for the World Heavyweight Championship in 2003. I mean, he had the two horrible ones with Scott Steiner, including that horrendous one at Royal Rumble. He had this. He had the one with Goldberg at Survivor Series. I mean, Triple H was just... Triple H was just... Oh, he had such bad matches. And yeah, this the booking in here, this was just ridiculous. Alright, I mean, the booking here, you could probably say, was even worse than the Royal Rumble match with Scott Steiner. I mean, this was just absolutely horrendous booking here. And this match just freaking sucked. Alright? I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, you had Ric Flair in Triple H's corner, and Shawn Michaels in Kevin Nash's corner, and for some reason they had Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair just make in individual entrances for themselves, instead of like just coming out with the guy they are in the corner with. I mean, why? And then, yeah, before the match even started, as Triple H was, during Triple H's entrance, Kevin Nash came and attacked at Triple H, and then, yeah, Ric Flair tried going after Kevin Nash, and then Shawn Michaels then attacked Ric Flair to stop him. And then, yeah, then they just, they got ejected from the match, and it didn't, it didn't even officially start yet, so I mean, what the hell? <sighs> yeah. And then, yeah, Kevin Nash and Triple H were brawling with each other on the outside of the ring before the match had officially started. Then they got in the ring and the match officially started. And oh my gosh, oh, such bad booking here. I mean, both guys, like, they were, like, constantly shoving and attacking Earl Hebner, the referee. And yeah, referee, and Earl Hebner didn't call for the bell at all. And yeah, and it was even, like, sometimes they intentionally shoved it. And then the ref Earl Hebner still didn't call for the bell. And then, yeah. It was just so bad. I mean, it was just a bunch of ridiculous overbooking here. With all them attacking each other and, like, all the rough bumps. I mean, it was just overkill. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, this lasted only, like, seven and a half minutes. And then, oh, yeah. It was just a crappy, crappy World Heavyweight Championship match. And, yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna jump to the end right here. And then Triple H got a sledgehammer. Earl Hebner tried to tell Triple H to get rid of it, and then Triple H nailed Earl Hebner in the shoulder with the sledgehammer, and then they called for the disqualification, and so Kevin Nash wins by disqualification. And yeah, but of course Triple H retains the World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah. Then afterwards, Kevin Nash is attacking Triple H some more, and he attacked him up, beat him down to JR and King's announce area in the entranceway. Ric Flair tried to come to help Triple H, and Kevin Nash. Nash took him out. Then Shawn Michaels came back out, tried to calm Kevin Nash down, and then Kevin Nash shoved him down. And then, yeah, Kevin Nash and Power Bond Triple H through Jaron King's announce table. Whatever. I mean, seriously, I mean, I. T this match. This freaking sucked, and this booking was absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I. I don't know. I give this, like, half of a star. I mean, seriously, fuck this match. Yeah.
And then, yeah, afterwards, then we had the last little segment with Stone Cold and Eric Bischoff in the skybox, and then, yeah, Bischoff then just eventually ended up puking, and then, yeah, it was funny. The next night on Rock Off, Bischoff was just act hung over the entire night, so, yeah. And then we had the fatal four-way for the women's championship. Jazz defending against Trish Stratus, Victoria, and Jacqueline. And yeah, for a for a women's match, I actually thought that this was actually pretty entertaining. Yeah, I mean this only lasted like five minutes, but yeah, I was actually enjoying this match for the five minutes that it lasted. I mean, had some good wrestling here. I mean, I thought all four divas got in enough offense. And yeah, I mean, I thought that this was actually pretty entertaining for the time that it lasted. Yeah. Jazz doing her moves, and then, yeah, at one point, Jazz got both Jacqueline and Victoria in her, like, double chicken wing, and, yeah, and then at one point, Jazz had Trish in an STF, and Jacqueline had Victoria in a half Boston crab, and, yeah, Trish got to the ropes, and then, yeah, Jazz then broke up Jacqueline's half Boston crab, and then Jazz had Victoria in the STF, and Trish broke that up. At one point, Jazz tried to close like Trish, and then Trish, like, completely bent back to where her hands touched the canvas, and yeah. And at one point, Trish tried to go for the satisfaction on Victoria. Or yeah, but yeah. Victoria threw Trish over the top rope, and Trish fell face first down to the floor. And it looked like she may have had a tooth knocked out when that happened, yeah. And then, yeah. Jacqueline, like, had Victoria in a bridge pin. Jazz broke it up with a splash. And then Jazz gave Jacqueline a DDT and pinned Jacqueline, and Jazz won. So, yeah. I actually thought that, yeah, well, I was actually entertained for this, by this match for the time that it lasted. Yeah, for a defense match, I thought it was pretty entertaining. I give it about two stars. Then we got the main event, and the stretcher match for the WWE Championship. Brock Lesnar defending against Big Show. And I thought this was pretty good right here. Yeah, I thought this was a good way to end the show. Yeah. Had a lot of uses of st stretchers. Yeah, Big Show had his backboard stretcher. Yeah, this came about from what he did to Rey Mysterio at Backlash. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, Big Show was using his backboard stretcher, and yeah, Brock Lesnar was using it too. Yeah. A lot of usage of, like, wheel stretchers. Which is, yeah, both, yeah, both Big Show and Brock Lesnar drove those into each other's ribs multiple times in the match, yeah. At one point, as Brock Lesnar was on a stretcher, Big Show gave Brock Lesnar a huge clothesline, and it just, like, drove Brock Lesnar, like, 10, 15 feet back across the yellow line that they had to stretcher the other one past in order to win. So, yeah, since Brock Lesnar wasn't on the stretcher, yeah, he didn't lose. And, yeah. At one point, yeah, Brock Lesnar choked Big Show out with a cable, and he tried stretching Big Show off past the yellow line, but yeah, the cable didn't extend that far, and yeah, Brock Lesnar tried yanking Big Show, but yeah, Big Show was just pulled off the stretcher, and yeah, so Big Show the match. Yeah, at one point, point, point like Brock Lesnar drove the stretch one of the stretchers into Big Show's ribs and then Big Show drove the stretcher into Brock Lesnar's ribs. Then at one point Big Show drove Brock Lesnar's spine first into the ring post and at the same time the back of Brock Lesnar's head hit the ring post, yeah. Then Big Show got another back stretcher backboard from the underneath the ring and he nailed Brock Lesnar with that a couple of times. And yeah. As Big Show was like on the ring apron, Lesnar was in the ring, he ran into Big Show a couple of times and then knocking him off the ring apron. Yeah. And then Brock Lesnar just walked out of the arena. And then Rey Mysterio's music hit. And then, yeah, Rey Mysterio snuck up from behind Big Show and gave him a 619. But then Big Show took Rey Mysterio out. And then Brock Lesnar came back on a forklift. And then, yeah, I was trying to compare this to Stone Cold Zamboni in 1998. Now, Brock Lesnar, like, dove off of the forklift and gave Big Show a crossbody. And then, yeah, Gave Big Show a suplex and an F5, and then Brock Lesnar placed on the stretcher backboard onto the pallets of the forklift, and then rolled Big Show onto it, and then, yeah, Brock Lesnar, like, rose Big Show higher, and then, yeah, he backed up the forklift past the yellow line, and then, yeah, Brock Lesnar won the match. Brock Lesnar.
contained the title, so yeah. I thought it was a pretty good match. I give it about three and a half stars. Now, overall, the show, I give it about like a, a 3.5 out of 10, yeah. I mean, yeah, the ladder match and the stretcher match are the, like the only good matches on the show. Everything else just completely sucks, so yeah. Just stay away from everything else besides ladder match and the stretcher match. So yeah, I mean, yeah, this is probably the worst show of 2000, worst pay-per-view of 2003, so yeah. I recommend that you try to stay away from the show, so. Yeah, alright, so yeah, that does for my review of Judgment Day 2003. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.